welcome. Welcome to you all, whoever you are, wherever you are. We gather remotely with others to worship our God. Details of various things that are happening around the linked parishes and indeed with friends in neighbouring Akarakal and Ardnamurchan are on the church websites aksm.org.uk and a and a parishes.org.uk. Welcome, welcome to you all. We begin our worship today as we sing the great hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. And if you're following in the hymn book, it's at number 457. Let us pray. Living God, we come before you today as your people, a community of faith, a family of hope, a people of love. We give thanks for your beloved Son, our Saviour, our Guide and our Protector, the Good Shepherd to all your beloved children, wherever we are, whomever we are, whatever we are. We are yours and you are ours. We give thanks that your constant and unending love knows no borders, no ethnicity, no gender or sexuality, but is poured out freely upon each one of us, today and in perpetuity, in a time of uncertainty and fear. We ask that this love continues to sustain us through whatever trials we face. As we seek to follow you in this ever-changing world, we ask for the wisdom to see your light, 
your light shining in every person we meet. Let your example of care and compassion for all people be our guiding force. In the many times that we fail to follow in your footsteps, we ask not only for forgiveness, but for boldness and surety in our ability to carry on, to return to your path. No matter how many times we may falter, we pray that we will always know that you stand with us. God of all, merciful and loving, we come before you in faith in hope and in love, today and every day. Amen. Then Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It's not what goes into your mouth that makes you ritually unclean. Rather, what comes out of it makes you unclean. Then the disciples came to him and said, Do you know that the Pharisees had their feelings hurt by what you said? Every plant which my Father in heaven did not plant will be pulled up, answered Jesus. Don't worry about them. They are blind leaders of the blind. And when one blind man leads another, both fall into the ditch. Peter spoke up, explain this saying to us. Jesus said to them, you're still no more intelligent than the others. Don't you understand? Anything that goes into your mouth goes into your stomach and then out of your body. But the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. And these are the things that make you ritually unclean. From your heart come the evil ideas which lead you to kill, commit adultery and do other immoral things, to rob, lie and slander others. These are the things that make you unclean. But to eat without washing your hands as they say you should, this doesn't make you unclean. Jesus left that place and went off to the territory near the cities of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman who lived in that region came to him. Son of David, she cried out, have mercy on me, sir. My daughter has a demon and is in a terrible condition. But Jesus did not say a word to her. His disciples came to him and begged him, send her away. She is following us and making all this noise. Then Jesus replied, I have been sent only to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. At this, the woman came and fell at his feet. Help me, sir, she said. Jesus answered, It isn't right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. That's true, sir, she answered. But even the dogs eat the leftovers that fall from their master's table. So Jesus answered her, You are a woman of great faith. What you want will be done for you. And at that very moment, her daughter was healed. Good morning everybody, it's lovely to be with you again. Today it's not a fire that's crackling away in the grate, the windows are all open and we're experiencing some wonderful weather. I hope it's nice where you are too. Reminds me of being on holiday. A few years ago we were visiting friends who were fortunate enough to live in Hong Kong. It's the first time we'd been to the Far East and the holiday was great. We enjoyed being out and about with friends and with catching up, as you do. Exploring the markets in particular was fascinating. They were crammed into the mazes of tiny streets and the goods on sale were so varied and colourful and even smelly. The senses were overwhelmed. The whole experience was fascinating and mind-blowing. 
One market in particular came to mind when I was thinking of this reflection. And that was where, sadly, live animals were on sale. And I've seen similar in other places in the world now too. Having developed world values and expectations, I would really, really like to condemn the practice of selling live animals. But for some people, it is their livelihood, which challenges my perceptions of what is right and what is wrong. And I eat meat. I can't complain. We really do have to think about why these practices happen and in partnership with market traders, all work together on what's best for the future, for animals and for people. Seeing animals caged up usually gives us a sense of unease. Seeing people caged up gives us more than a sense of unease. It's wrong. And slavery has been in the headlines recently. And rightly, it's been condemned. And the Hebrew Bible, in our Old Testament, it tells us in its early pages of God rescuing Israel from slavery in Egypt. Throughout the rest of the Hebrew Bible are many stories that remind Israel that they were once slaves and so to treat any slaves they had or they came across in a different way to how others in their world would treat slaves. The standards are so very different from ours, but they were the basic human rights of the day. In the New Testament, we read of Jesus trying to convince Israel that once again they were slaves, but this time they were slaves to the institution, the theory, the practice of Judaism as taught by the religious leaders, the Pharisees. These practices, this interpretation and the religious legalism had become the foundation of Jewish social and cultural world and woe betide you if you didn't live your life the way the Pharisees wanted you to. The free and loving heart of being God's special people had gone and Jesus rigorously attacked this slavery to use last week's image he was stepping out of the boat of the safety of cultural values and traditional acceptance. He was focusing his eyes on God and walking across the waters of deep troubles, for seas were places of chaos and danger to Israelites. And he was showing Israel another set of values to live by. Rather than being enslaved by the past, or by adhering to rules, what really mattered to God was that people lived freely with hearts that honoured God's values of kindness and compassion and love and grace. These are great. And the passages we read or heard today show that this was at the core of Jesus' concern. When the Pharisees and the teachers of law asked Jesus why his disciples broke the rules by not washing their hands before they ate, it wasn't because they were concerned with hygiene or infections, but because the disciples were breaking the traditions of the elders. Jesus' stinging rebuke makes clear he sees the double standards of these law-abiding leaders who say what should be done but whose hearts are so very far from God's values. What comes out of their mouths exposes this gap. What each of us actually does, and the way we do it exposes what's in our hearts too. Our actions are rooted in the motivations of our hearts, and Jesus is very clear that this shows who we are. Jesus continued in verse 17 of the passage, to expand on this, even if, as his disciples remind him, he is offending the Pharisees. Why does it offend? Because Jesus speaks out clearly of what he sees of the inner life of many Pharisees. They were enslaved by unclean thoughts, not those that flit through your mind really quickly, but what is held and dwelt upon. They were enslaved by sexual immorality and slander, and the list went on. And it is these that make a person unclean, not hand washing. Immediately after this is a very puzzling episode of an encounter with a Canaanite woman. 
three thoughts on this. First, Jesus' behaviour, to begin with at any rate, mirrored the way the Pharisees would have dealt with her, of how other Jews would have been expected to deal with her. Canaanites were shunned for various reasons by Israel, and they would, she, she would not have been part of mainstream culture and society. Therefore, she would have been deemed to be unworthy of any help. Second, in saying that he came only to the lost sheep of Israel, Jesus reminded the disciples and the Pharisees of the expected limitations of God's grace. And thirdly, the woman argued persuasively that she also was worthy of help. She accepted her Canaanite and gender inferiority, but would not accept these as limiting the possibility of God's grace. Jesus seemed to change his mind, and then he helped her. Was the start of this episode an example of how Israelite culture and society would have her treated? Was Jesus always going to heal her daughter? Was Jesus really only there for Israel? Does this mean that he changed his mind? If Jesus changes his mind, does God change too? Wow. No. Jesus was not enslaved by the expectations of the Pharisees or Israelite culture or their society. Jesus reminded those around him that God was not enslaved by their expectations. He was not caged up and limited, but that God's grace and love was for all, regardless of their ethnicity or gender. Nothing, nothing will limit or hold back or enslave the grace, the compassion, the values and the love of God. It really is for all who step out in faith. After this, Jesus went along the shore of the Sea of Galilee and 4,000 more people came to him to experience the grace, the compassion and the care that came from God. Jesus was a busy man. Still today, there are thousands who are in need of God's love. Let's be the ones to freely share that. Enjoy the weekend. Amen. Let us pray. Our prayers for others and ourselves. Generous God, we pray for your blessing on this community as we seek to find you in the midst of fear and trouble, as we search for hope in times of darkness. Shine your light into the lives of each one of us that we may know your love is with us always. We pray for your whole church, a people attempting to live in your example and spread your message throughout the world. We recognise the difficulties in this time more than any other that face those bearing witness to you. But we ask that all Christians will have strength in your love to continue and to flourish. We pray for the marginal, those on the edges of our society living in fear or hurt, attempting to overcome great pain without the comfort and security many of us take for granted. We pray that we, your people, will give everything to help them and that they will find support in you. We pray for our global community as the world seems ever smaller where one country is not immune from the troubles of another. We ask that leaders and citizens will follow your example of peace, love and forgiveness and work towards a better world for all peoples. We pray that each one of us will show your love to the world, welcoming friend and stranger alike, bringing your kingdom ever closer. And we pray this through Jesus Christ. Amen. And continuing in a spirit of prayer, we bring our offerings as we think of all the gifts of money and time and talent 
that we are able to share for the good of all creation. And we bring all our thoughts and our prayers and our offerings together as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever. Amen. And now we're going to sing the hymn Halle, 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 number 345. Halle, halle, halle. worship has ended and our loving, our serving in the world continues. Keep safe, take care and know that the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit is with you today, tomorrow and always. Amen. Shine upon